Desmond? Yeah. Peter Cheek has got some poetry for you. Two poems, they're epic. Get ready. Here we go. That's your only applause and we'll be getting. But the well, first thing that I did think is everybody has stood the chance without that one. And that's always a good inclusive moment to be too often any can. I am last on I think now. Do you know there's a there is a race after the Grand National? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna start with this uh, newly penned poem that I finished this morning. It's called New Boiler. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just begin it. Uh, thanks, Anna, for the accompaniment. It's not yet begun, but I know it's coming. <laughs> Nothing chills the ego, shows how dreary things can get, than two hours of a Tuesday spent in the laundrette. In there, the ambitious flounder, in fact, ambition flees, finds a metaphorical shotgun, puts it between its knees, but the universe is a mystery. Dharma lies in those fragrant metal drums. This Tuesday held fate itself between its powder softened thumbs. Through a plastic washing basket, one panel quickly clean through. I saw a vision in acrylic, pink hair in curlers. She said she was 52, maybe 53. She lied about being a backing singer one time with ABC. She puffed upon her all up. Blue smoke rings on my smalls, took a bottle from beneath her tabard, cleared her throat and drawled. Want a swig of Frosty Jack? She offered, broke the ice. I've been in there 90 minutes. I didn't need asking twice. <laughs> and off she went, and as we quaffed, and then we chewed the fat of her cats and kids and weeping mould, each a plague that ruined her flat. Then the plumbing that rumbled and the stench from out the pipes, the rent man, she said, was a rascal. Oh, something not so nice. I've rang the council a hundred times for plumbing, they'll do for call. But it's different if you've mice. They'll be round once a fortnight then. Rats, they'll make it twice. I was finding it hard to want to go on living. Side of gloom and pink's tails of wall. My joie de vivre, a joie de gone. Then she told a tale that hit me like a stone from her eldest catapult. I saw my old man last week. He just appeared in the kitchen. He's been dead five years, I shit myself. My eyelids would not stop twitching. What the fuck? I thought I'd thought. It turned out, in fact, I said it. I know the prick, that was me too. I said, do you know you're deaded? Did he speak? My eyes now wide, the dryers din now silence. Well, sort of, she whispered, her fag smoke now a holy vapour, wrapping, wrapping her in mystery from pink her down to floor. He struggled and was raspy, he just said, do more. I imagine what she'd seen, this octogenarian poltergeist, his long dead face all wizened in that flat above the bookies, a fading ghost in ectoplasm. I felt the tearing of every last atom he had in that nobody in nowhere. His straining purgatorial persona, every ounce of whatever he was boiled up in hellish fumes to go there to pink one last time all of that to whisper to this princess in a tabard smoking drum now was the time to get it all done a breath beyond the last aloud do more he cut me through like a jagged knife this prophet from the afterlife his words though few told all that's true a bell of doom for me and you he reminded me in that perfumed hell of lavender and alpine blue bell that his words to pink were for me as well his bony fingers wrapped out on his coffin lid that today's doing is tomorrow's i did what this story needs is a dream sequence and that my friends is what's coming a chance to escape the smell of fags and stories about plumbing 
I felt myself transported, the land, the laundrette melting away, a kaleidoscope, universe of colours, swept open the self-locking door, me and Pink, we were away. We flew above the rainy clouds, found blue beyond the grey, kept climbing higher and further off, and then I saw us both, me on the deck laid out, and Pink in charge of a speeding schooner. Her hard brown arms taut like the ropes she pulled, she pulled skillfully to order. In golden sunlight, dolphins bounced in the wake of this streamlined streak of fiberglass and honey. Me and Captain Pink, her the chieftain of the med, deep green eyes plotting our course, striped strong back and billowing locks, this goddess steered us toward the docks. We moored in Tangier for martinis by the bay, had a paratifs in a jazz club, then camels to a mountain hideaway. This poetess of insight, this harridan of hope, she swam in pools of turquoise on this perfumed Moroccan slope. Her paintings hung about us, since Amelia filled the air, a harem of brilliant wildness sprawled on cushions everywhere. Songs of harp and calabash, bird song and sweet melody, played solids dedicated to her eyes, her voice, her transcendent beauty. We listened as she read her work, the prize she'd won at Booker, while a contortionist danced through incense clouds, entertaining these ephemeral fuckers. Pink. Now resplendent in her silken robes, a caravan of acolytes arriving now in droves. Everyone brought precious stones, meager gifts to the one that knows the true workings of our human souls. Truly, these ecstatic pilgrims would proclaim, no one could do more in this earthly domain. I watched and waited for Pink's address, and then a snap, no more tenderness as the words came out. Bollocks, coin slot, jammed, and pinch me quid. All that was done is now undid. That perfect world remains not yet. I see I'm back in the laundrette. Pink is struggling, side a sweat in every pore. I asked what she thought he meant when he had said do more. I've not a clue the daft old get. I bet he means ring the council, but he's off his nuts if he thinks they'll do out. It needs a new boiler. Thank you very much. <laughs> Written today, that. Fresh off the press. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, uh, is called... Uh, I actually... Well, we met someone over the uh, Christmas period from New York, and, and as we were talking, it was kind of like, you know when you meet somebody from somewhere else, oh yeah, I've been there, I've been there. And then they go on and they talk about the place they're at, and you realise, actually, I've never been there. But I feel like I have, because it's New York. So, you know, you chip in with a few stories of your own. So this poem is New York from someone who's never been. New York has a king, he's tough to, at least he was. Looks like Christopher Walken, but it's not him. Last time I saw him, he was doing community service with Stephen Merchant in Reading. Not the jail, which would be wild. They have gangs too, the gangs of New York, infamous these. They like to wear colours, but I'm not sure which ones. Never really specified, I presume red and blue, but not a clue. And in West Side Story, it seems to be a lot of finger clicking. And to be honest, they do not look that tough. A bit too dancey and prancy, singing as well. More like a weekend in Blackpool than Welcome to Hell. But they have other gangs there that are based on countries of origin. Italians, they like to eat pasta first, then kill in the dark with music playing, operatic slaying. That's what mobsters like to do, stabbed in the throat by a bloke in a shirt stained with ragu. The Russians like a tattoo, or two. But the king that made the biggest New York groove was not a gangster. The only guns he had, he ate. A present so big he remains famous, a story that always remains great. 
Even today, when we doubt right and wrong, we can agree the best king is Kong. Though Simeon swings from gigantic ape arms, he took a bite from the big apple, but it only did him harm. This was before the greatest showman, when these circuses became cool. This was the age of the freak show, when these maniacs were just cruel. That massive monkey was life encapsulated in a brief escapade with a showman's lifestyle. He didn't get the good bit. The champagne, the tuxedos, the Broadway smiles. They chained him in an undersized cage and Kong got oversized piles. No wonder he was fuming when the big night came, snapped those metal tiles, those metal ties and hit the sky high tiles. Where does an angry mammoth monkey go when his anger is spiked? Hopper had not painted a bar big enough for this hurry night talk on a manic night. I mean, why would you do this? Treat this giant so bad. Not a friendly face or a walk in the park. Sometimes you forget that this city can be so dark. No wonder Kurt Russell wanted to get out so bad. <laughs> Kong was ahead of the bonfire of any vanities. He was going to pull this whole place down as soon as he could find a tree. These human monsters needed some King Kong karma, ideally filmed by Brian De Palma. <laughs> then, is it wrong, Kong? It seems it. But what camera lucida have I to draw my place, my world? Coronation Street, Gail Platt, her mum, long face, dead bodies in council flats and clouds and hard-working put-upon detectives, divorced with errant children and sinks and hard-angry hard friends and insight unheralded, worlds of grey, cold and harsh surfaces and humour of the basest kind. So Carry On looks like Beckett in comparison. And Neil fucking Morrissey, as a fool with a heart, but as thick as the custard in a Manchester tart. <laughs> Enough then of dead chimneys and empty solidarity, and cheap, cheerless bonhomie, tuneless karaoke, black puffer jacket, short back and sides, union flags, looks always snide, and anger and petty and shadows not light, and no fucking poetry and so many fights. Yes, it was wrong what happened to Kong. But as he fell to his death, past every empire, state, plate, glass, window, glorious or bland, I bet he thought, it's better than fucking Skull Island. Those small-minded, servile bastards treated me like a freak. At least I hear I got to swipe out at geeks in biplanes. And a love interest, interspecies, beauty tiny, giant ape, a size impossible to overcome. Differences they'd never allow, but now that it's done and the floor is coming at me like a bullet from a gun, and even in that final descent, Kong, I am sure, not a single doubt, thought, fuck Skull Island, I'm still glad I got out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've got our last act on now, which is uh, Mike. It's me, yeah, I'm singing a song. Thanks, Sue, Tati, bye. And you, Sue, Jenny, back to Chippy. We've got Mike coming on now to sing us some fabulous songs. And, um,